been in this business pretty much my whole life, and I've covered the local baseball team for more than half of it, and I've never, ever had an athlete bring up on his or her own that they felt like they were overweight, but that just happened in Bradenton. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins that I hope you'll check out as well. Miguel Yahure was already my favorite starting pitcher. And I'm saying that in a fun way. Meaning of anyone at any level of the system just because I enjoy watching him pitch. Uh, To call him a throwback, I mean, I guess you could do that. He's a pitcher. He's not a thrower. He can get the ball up there. 91, 92 miles an hour. But he's really more a curve, a change, a slider guy. And he has, and I confirmed this with Justin Message, one of the team's pitching coaches, just now on the trip that I made to Bradenton last week, that Yohure has, in fact, the best off-speed stuff of anyone. Now, you can go pitch by pitch and find somebody else who has a better slider or a better change, but the overall package of his off-speed stuff and his ability to both command and use him in confidence, that's not matched by anybody. And that's something I enjoy watching. I'd rather see a pitcher have someone buckle at the knees than I would see them swinging through 100-mile-an-hour heat. It's just more entertaining for me. So Yuhure is my guy. Uh, That said, he had a difficult 2021, uh, mostly because he'd end up having a forearm-slash-elbow issue that shut him down while he was with Indianapolis, and then once he came back to the Indianapolis rotation, he eventually, and this is to his credit as well as all of the people on the athletic training staff and medical side, make it back to Pittsburgh in September. Didn't do well at all once he got back, but he got back. So I asked him to outline what his goals might be for the coming season, and this was the response I got. Okay, so to make the next step for this season, first I I have to make a adjustment in the off season. I make adjustment eating better because that year I was a little, let's say, a little chubby. I wasn't eating really in the right way. This off season I eat a little better, so that's the start of this season. You say eat better? Yeah, eat better. better. Yeah. Oh, okay. And yes, the term that you heard there was in fact chubby. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone. An eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. So what did Yuhure feel was holding him back? He could have given me any number of answers to that, and you know, I would have been in no position to contest them. Because I don't know what he's doing in the offseason. I don't know what his outlook is for 2022. He instead elected to point out on his own that he was overweight. And you know what? You could kind of see that. Um, And if you couldn't see it, you could look right in the media guide and see that he was listed at 5'11", 220. But he also had kind of the, well, I can use the word if he did, chubby face. You know, you could see that just in looking at him on the mound. And he felt 
that if he were to slender down and to get stronger, that the rest of his body would help support the arm. There'd be less burden on just flicking the baseball, using the arm, the shoulder, the elbow, because there'd be leg drive involved. There'd be more consistent mechanics. There'd be less of a fatigue factor as he's out there deeper into games. Now, I'm not about to predict superstardom for you, Hooray. I do believe that he's going to make the Pittsburgh rotation. I do believe that he should make the Pittsburgh rotation. I believe, for instance, that he's got more to offer to the staff than, say, for example, Will Crow or Bryce Wilson. But I also believe, and I've heard this from way too many managers for it to be off the mark, that a rotation benefits from having different types of pitchers, from having different looks, different angles, righty-lefty, fast and slow. And if this staff, as expected, certainly by this summer, has both Mitch Keller and, eventually, Rowanzi Contreras throwing 100 miles an hour, well, those aren't guys you'd want to put back-to-back. You know what I'm saying? This is stuff that I've heard from years from Chuck Tanner, Jim Leland, Lloyd McClendon, and onward. You want to make sure that you're spreading those guys out a little bit. Yahure is the perfect type of pitcher to put in there between them in a three-game series. He'll completely get you off balance. Oh, and by the way, his fastball will be sped up a little bit, according to the kid himself, by being in better shape. He feels like he's already seeing better velocity, that he's capable of hitting 93, 94 and kind of sitting there, as opposed to the 90, 91 that I'd mentioned earlier. He's not a soft tosser. He's got a live fastball to him. And it can be combined with that off-speed stuff to look that much faster. I I like this kid. I'm not going to apologize for that. I, I like everything that I've seen and heard of him. No, I wasn't nuts about the fact that he looked a little pudgy last year either, but... But he acknowledged it, he went and did something about it, then he just went and acknowledged it publicly. When we come back, just one question. Welcome back to Cyber J1Q, and today's comes from Ethan Early, who asks, DK, do you think... The Daniel Vogelback signing was a good one. I think he's shown glimpses of really amazing power, but never seems to keep it for long. And yet he's still on the younger side. Yeah, Ethan, I I could see labeling him the way you did across the board there. He's 29 years old, and he's been erratic with that power. If you go back to 2019, when he was with the Mariners, he had 30 bombs. You know, this guy was just letting them fly the whole summer. And, you know, the pandemic year hits. He had four home runs for Milwaukee in the shortened season, just two months. And last year with the Brewers, uh, hit only nine. That was in 215 at bats. So I can't, I can't pretend uh, to be super stoked about this addition. Uh, It's one of those that if it clicks, it looks great. For anyone who doesn't know, the contract term is very favorable to the team, which shouldn't surprise anyone who follows the Pirates. He's guaranteed $800,000 this year, which is a hair above big league minimum. And then there's a $1.25 million club option for next year with a $200,000 buyout, which means he's guaranteed a million for the the life of the deal, 
And if he does go and hit 30 homers like he did for Seattle, the Pirates are absolutely going to keep him for the following year at an equally low price. So it's a really smart contract by Ben Charrington and his staff that comes with not much risk. Not much risk. He's a free agent. He's playing at a position where the Pirates already have someone in the fold, and that's Yoshi Tsutsugo. It's still not clear to anyone, and Derek Shelton hasn't helped this cause because he won't say anything about it, who's going to be the first baseman and who's going to be the DH. Uh, Depending on who I spoke with in Bradenton, the answer was different each time. So we'll see how that shapes up. Uh, But the general way that I look at this is it's risk-free, and it's got some ceiling to it because he does have that power. You can see that in batting practice. You can see that he puts that that beer league build of his. Boy, we talk a lot about physiques today. Uh, this is not an overweight individual, incidentally. He's just really, really thick and stocky. Kind of Matt Stairs-ish, for those of you who go back. And he's got... a uh, robust, compact swing that he lays into that baseball, and it goes when it goes. But he batted 219 last year on top of only having the nine homers, so he wasn't doing the Brewers much good offensively. And, oh, by the way, he was playing at American Family Field, the former Miller Park, which is notoriously hitter-friendly, and it still didn't help. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm not like through the roof over this, uh, to say the least. I, I'm still somewhat confused as to why the Pirates wouldn't just get themselves a first baseman who can play good, solid first base and then have Yoshi uh, stay on the bench. On the other hand, on the other hand, no one would question that this is a lineup in severe need of pop. So. Might as well try it. I appreciate the question, Ethan. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. We'll do another one tomorrow.